as you all met me earlier, my name, is, my name is Mike, and I'm just gonna talk a little bit very quickly about the Rust language server. It's uh, brand new, it just appeared within the past month or two. Uh, just so you know where I'm coming from, I know I was talking about it earlier, but my day job, I'm a game developer. I work mainly in C++ on Windows in Visual Studio proper. So I'm pretty spoiled as far as IDEs go. You know, Visual Studio is pretty awesome. So over the past few months, as I started working in Rust, you know, it's almost been like going back to the Stone Age a little bit, whereas, you know, I'm typing text in Sublime Text and running to the terminal window every second to recompile everything. It's been pretty annoying. So I've been just keeping my eye out, hoping to find the perfect solution as far as an IDE goes, plugins and everything. And just over you know, the past few weeks, I've been trying Visual Studio Code and there is a nice Rust plugin for Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's called VS Rust Code. Um, it is not Rusty Code, that is the older one, and unfortunately that is the first one that still comes up in the searches if you Google for Visual Studio Code Rust extensions. Um, but you want VS Rust Code, and then you want to install Racer, which is the uh, code completion crate, and with this plugin and with this crate, you actually get pretty decent code completion in Rust, um, enough that it's actually kind of decent for as far as I've been working in. Um, unfortunately, I still don't get any live error checking um, or any sort of debug features or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of you here are on OS X or Linux, and you know if you're using Atom or whatever else IDE, I'm sure there are nice plugins for Rust. Um, but you, usually they all interface with Racer in some way. You get pretty good code completion out of them. Um, Racer tends to start to fail once you put it, start putting complex code into it, like macros. Uh, I don't think Racer handles macros very well. So we still have a lot of room for improvement here. And just, <clears throat> just maybe in the past month, uh, they announced the Rust language server, or RLS. And the RLS, if, in case you don't know what a language server is, it's just the background process that talks between the compiler and whatever IDE you're using. So anytime you type, you know, string dot, it's, it go, goes ahead and asks the compiler, you know, what are the methods of string? And the compiler answers back saying, okay, here are all the methods of string, here's all the documentation. And these are literally just JSON messages being passed and forth. Um, you get very accurate type info, you know, live error checking, all the documentation, all the nuts and bolts that you would expect from a modern IDE. <clears throat> and, you know, any IDE can listen to this protocol, you know, for any language actually, not even just Rust, as long as it has a language server. And this was actually, uh, I believe, standardized by Microsoft and Red Hat. They standardized this language server protocol that's just a common JSON message format for, you know, whatever language you're using, it can communicate this data in this format to whatever IDE you're using. So even though I'm focusing on Visual Studio Code today, uh, whatever IDE you're, you're using, you can probably find a language server program <coughs> plugin for it, and maybe you can try giving RLS a shot with it. Uh, unfortunately, the setup for RLS, at least right now, it's, you know, it's rapidly changing. I first set it up about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and then you know, yesterday I was like, oh, I have to give this little lightning talk. So I went through, tried to set it up again, and it totally changed. <laughs> so hopefully these steps are fairly accurate, but uh, maybe they have changed even tonight. So assuming you're all using Rust up, you just clone the RLS repo, say with Rust Lang Nursery slash RLS. Uh, and then you just CD in there and cargo install it. And again, this all has to be on the nightly, nightly compiler, nightly tool chain, because this is all cutting edge. Um, and then I had to add, it's a little hard to see here, I had added this to my path, which is my Rust up toolchain directory. And maybe just to show you, again, this is all on the, um, if you go to the RLS GitHub page, it's all on their wiki. If you need that directory, you can, you can type rustc dash dash print sysroot. Uh, it's a little hard to see there. Rust C dash dash print sysroot and it gives you the folder where your Rust tool chain is. And you just add that to your, add that to your path, basically. <laughs> and then um, you need to add, install these other components, Rust analysis, which is gonna be the 
RLS metadata for that standard library if you want completion for the standard library. And you need to install the Rust source, source code. Um, I believe this is gonna change in the very near future in that you won't need the Rust source code, you're only gonna need the Rust analysis. Um, but I was unable to get, at least up till yesterday, I was unable to get completion for the standard library without installing the Rust source component. What is Rust Step Analysis? I've never heard of that before. Well, that, that's brand new. It's just for RLS and is literally going to be so that you don't need to install the source. It is just like the JSON metadata for the standard library for our RLS. But what's going to happen when. Oh, so they're going to have to regenerate Rust Analysis every time they cut a release of yep. Rust. Yep. Um, so if you actually, if you install this component and you go in this folder and look at it, it's literally just a bunch of JSON files describing the entire standard library. Okay, um, and so essentially those just get indexed by RLS. Correct. That is the idea. Unfortunately, I could, it did not work for me yesterday. I tried and tried and tried. But as soon as I installed Rust Source, it just worked. So, but I expect, I expect step five to go away. And that's why I say this is like rapidly changing. So you can probably just ignore all of these because it's going to become very <laughs> easy in the near future, I hope. Um, well, it sounds like it, it would eventually get rolled into Rust up. Correct. Like Rust up would just exactly. be like Rust up enable RLS. Literally, that is, you know, this sucks. So in the near future, it's probably just going to be cargo install RLS. Yeah. Um, it's, it is not that way at all right now, unfortunately. Um, and actually, the last step if you're using Visual Studio Code is you need to add it to your config because it, it is not configured to use RLS by default yet because this is so new. And I can show you how to do that real fast. Um, so, so uh, Visual Studio Code speaks the wire, the protocol for? For RLS, correct, yeah. Uh, since this whole language server protocol was developed, standardized by Microsoft, uh, okay. the reference implementation for RLS, the RLS client, is in Visual Studio Code. Okay. So you, if you're using another editor, you will probably have a harder time finding a plugin for it. But the, you know, when they released RLS on GitHub, the reference implementation was Visual Studio Code. So that's why you know, it has, that's why I'm using it right now. And here I'll just show you if I go to in Visual Studio Code to settings, and maybe I can zoom this in for you here. Let's see. I don't know the zoom button on Visual Studio Code, but I just had to add this at the bottom here on this side. Rust RLS executable, Rust up, and then arguments run nightly RLS. And the reason, you know, you always have to be running it on a nightly compiler. And again, this is all in the, if you get the Visual Studio Code plugin, it's on the GitHub page. Um, it tells you how to do all this. Um, one thing on Windows, I did have to install CMake to compile RLS. Uh, all of you on OS X probably won't have that problem, but I did. And let me go ahead and show you what RLS actually does, and this is the killer feature for me right now. So here I have the uh, just the sample program that's on the Rust Lang website. And for example, if I were to make a non-exhaustive match pattern by deleting that end case and saving it, you'll see you can kind of see down here it says RLS analysis finished, um, and then I get a red squealy live error checking. It's like the year 2017. I can hover over it and see the error, non-exhaustive patterns. I can go in my little problems window and I get a nice error list. It's not just a text blob. I can double click all of these errors and go directly to the line where the error is. So this is sort of the killer feature for me, even right now in this sort of half finished state. You know, I get live error checking as I type. Yeah. Um, you know, I can type blah, 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 and immediately gives me a red squiggly. Um, you know, if I start typing, you know, a lot of this is from Racer already. Racer was pretty good at just the basic completion. So if I made a, you know, a vector with numbers, and then I could type ends dot, you know, eventually it would hopefully give me yeah, that a little was, completion that was a good for all that. a few seconds there while it went and built the list for you. Yeah, for sure. So you, you'll see it down here. It'll say analysis started, analysis finished. Um, and actually, if I open, you know, one of my bigger crates here that I was working on, it would sit there for a good 10 seconds. Sure. So it's not quite there yet. Um, part it's, of the idea. It's still faster than 
like starting a whole build cycle. Oh, for sure, for sure. Like the whole idea of language server is this all staged in res resident in memory, and it could do incremental compilation yeah. and just do it really fast. Unfortunately, in incremental compilation is still in its infancy in Rust, yeah. but I expect this to get better and better. And actually, um, while it's doing the analysis, if it can't give you the data in time, it falls back to Racer. So um, it's still basically using Racer in the background, but I expect that to go away too. I bet if they start hooking it up to uh, like the actual Rust compiler <coughs> and the developers who are working on the Rust compiler start using this, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I, can't, yeah, just I can't fucking stand Working on the compiler, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that is the basics of RLS. Like I said, I probably wouldn't go out and go out of your way to install it right now. As you saw, those steps were kind of a, a pain. But maybe give it a month and you'll probably just be able to do cargo install RLS and it'll just be great. <clears throat> that so something like this might pull me away from IntelliJ. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, this is what I've been looking for. You know, I hate running. I hate doing. I tried like Cargo Watch, or I tried just recompiling in the terminal every few seconds, and it was just a nothing. Not, I was so used to Visual Studio, so this is nice just to get the like live squigglies as I make an error. You know. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's basically what RLS is right now. Uh, it'll probably continue to get better. Like I said, you probably just ignore all of these steps because they're going to change probably within two weeks. Um, but the other nice thing in Visual Studio Code is I've finally been able to get an interactive debugger with Rust. And I know you, you could have used you know GDB or LLDB with Rust in the past, but who wants to do command line debugging? I don't. Um, but you can actually debug Rust interactively with Visual Studio Code. Um, again, I'm using Windows, but it's Pretty much the same, I would assume, if you, for all of you. Um, if you're on OS X and Linux or using the GNU toolchain, there's an extension uh, for Visual Studio Code called Native Debug. Um, for me, I'm on the, the MSVC toolchain. My life kind of sucks still, but there is, I can use the uh, native Visual Studio Code C++ plugin and kind of kind of do it. And I'll, I'll show you guys an example. So here I'm just in the uh, back in the sample. I can just place a breakpoint here, and I can go ahead and first I'm going to build it. Just make sure it all builds. Okay, and then I can hit this debug button here, and I'm going to hit this breakpoint hopefully. And there we go. And now I can I can sort of look at the this is the part where it sucks at least on Visual Studio. I can sort of <laughs> look at the variables in the watch window. Um, see, I can see the accumulator. I, the program I can't really look at because it's a string and the debugger doesn't really know the, the format of Rust strings. But you know, being able to basically look at variables and step through, it's better than print statements. That's it. Yeah, it's interesting. It gives you the length. It's yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's actually interesting because you know this is the C++ debugger plugin, and in C uh, strings are just zero terminated, but in Rust they have a length attached to them. Yeah. So. That's the, the interesting difference there. That's, um, that's why they're safer, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and if you are using the, uh, if you're using GDB or LLDB, you could actually get proper output for your watch variables. If in your uh, GDB directory, there will be a Rust dash GDB script, and that actually has the proper pretty printing for all of these. Yeah. Uh, I don't get that with the MSVC toolchain, but hopefully someday soon. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, you know, I get step through and actually look at what's happening and actually Ooh, sort of debug yeah. interactively. And that's a, that's a big benefit. And I've actually used this within the past few weeks to <coughs> debug things that I was struggling to debug just by printing things out. Um, that's pretty exciting. Nice. Yeah, that, that will be very helpful. Yeah, so it is getting there. We're well, not quite IDE yet, but it is getting there rapidly. Cool. So um, that's all I've got. <laughs> Any questions? I know uh, the install steps probably weren't very clean, but it's in the readme. I, I was yeah. looking at the yeah. Project. I mean, if you, you feel around with it enough, you'll get it, and hopefully, it'll all just get very easy soon. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Sure.